guest here on Breakfast Television, former principal, founder of Bully Beware, um, such a great resource for us to discuss, <clears throat> pardon me, this incredibly important topic. And can we start with this Absolutely. article that's in the province newspaper? Grab your province or go to theprovince.com. Don't want to see if you can get a close-up of this because mm -hmm. we want to see this message come across first before we get into it. John Ferry writes this article challenging the notion of anti-bullying activists and their, their harsh nature being bullying in itself mm -hmm. and the victim thinking uh, surrounding the idea of Pink Shirt Day and the idea of it being a fad. What do you think of this? Mm -hmm. I, think, uh, I think there's a caution there to be aware of. I think we have to be careful that this isn't just a shot in the dark, that it's Pink day we're all going to be kind on one day and then everything's going to go back to the way it was and I think that is the caution we all need to be aware of. we need to push our pink forward we need to have pink day as random day as every day we need to have a kinder gentler uh, culture I think where kids don't feel frightened to go to school right we were just talking about that in the commercial break because that's the that's the the one that really grabs me and, and the moms in my group, it's like, what do you do if you acknowledge that your child is being bullied mm -hmm. and they're doing everything they can to not go to school? Mm -hmm. And 160,000 kids a day in Canada don't go to school be, for fear of being bullied. For fear of being bullied. So, and so if we know that, what are we going to do? What are we doing in our schools between 8.30 and 3.30 that is building a culture of not just, not tolerance, the, that word has to go. It's not just acceptance, it's welcoming, it's inclusion. I take up space in the school, I matter. If I'm not here, I'm going to be missed. Uh, I have friends, everybody needs a friend at school, even just one friend. That's the way we start to build. That I welcome you, I welcome you, you welcome me back. You know, we don't expect everyone in the world to be friends no. because that is not the way the world works at all, and we know that. But we do expect you to have room for me and my beliefs and my understanding. And certainly when we're talking about our, our kids, in school they have to go to school they don't have a choice so it you know at least in elementary school they better love it and then in middle high school they better like it and they better miss it if they're not there so if we start seeing our kids not wanting to go to school little lights need to be coming on what's going on for my kid at school you know we were talking about this earlier on the show and Cindy we were chatting about this off camera is that idea of building up the self-esteem and self-worth for for students and anybody yeah. because bullying doesn't just happen on the playground no. or at school workplace we see it in the uh, the sports arena, politics, how do you manage this? Because with the social media landscape, it is so complicated to control all of these messages and potential attacks that can happen. How do you man manage somebody and, in your words, make them bulletproof, so to speak? And if we could do that, I, I think we would have we could stop talking about this issue. I don't I don't know a way that we can actually um, make it so that kids feel like they are completely protected. They're so vulnerable. Our kids are so very vulnerable. Every day they walk into school, every day they open up their social media. It is a different social landscape, as you're saying. There's no uh, guarantee that I'm going to have the same care and attention and, and place in my social grouping today as I did yesterday, as I might have tomorrow so coming in wondering what that social landscape number one is tough number two how am I going to manage it if somebody starts to attack me because there's so many vulnerabilities in our youth and when we when we become adults we have a little bit more resilience we have a little bit more foundation we have a little bit more understanding of who we are what we believe in and what we stand for but before that I think our kids need the biggest circle that they can have around them supporting them believing in them trusting them letting them make errors helping them prop themselves back up and understand that sometimes people are not very kind. That's a life lesson that we need to teach our children. It is a life lesson. And I think what's hitting on uh, many is that, that idea of just one, everybody needs one friend. one friend. Everybody needs someone to go to. What about the bully? You know, bullying is about power and control. So kids who don't have a sense of power and control in one area may look to another, and there's lots of arenas at school. So if bullying's about power and control, and we know that hurt kids hurt, it doesn't help to bully more. Right. So we need to absolutely have some good language. Our codes of conduct in school need to be living documents. We need to know what they say, what are our escalating consequences. We also need to have a restorative practice within our school so that if I've done harm and you call me on it, I need an opportunity to try and repair that harm. 
And that's about learning and growing. And that's kind of, the, I think, the way we're going to make a difference. Well, the discussion definitely being uh, held today all across the board. PinkShirtDay.ca is a great resource for the stats that uh, Jody was throwing out. And uh, BullyBeware.com is your site. Yes. Uh, it's a great tool uh, to help parents, uh, students, teachers, everybody involved in the process. So, Cindy, as always, thanks for coming on. Thank you. And spreading this message. Uh, Michelle, we'll go back over to you and uh, keep the comments coming on Facebook. We'll read some of those around 740.